Welcome to today's webinar on the fully integrated wearable platform for heart rate and SpO2. I'm Katie Wong, an applications engineer working at Maxim Integrated, and today I'll be acting as moderator for this webinar. Joining us today is Nishet Tamer. Nishet Tamer joined Maxim Integrated in 2011. He has more than 16 years of experience in the electronics industry in technical sales, as well as business and product management. In his current role, he is a he is responsible for leading Maxim Integrated's wearable algorithm solutions. So without further ado, Nishat, if you would like to begin your presentation. Thank you, Katie. Hey, everyone. Um, today, I'll be presenting how Maxim can contribute to your wearable design with a complete PPG solution. Let's start by shortly touching how wearables have been evolving from fitness to medical and what does PPG has to offer for medical wearables. Obviously, um, wearables uh, enable continuous and remote data over a long period of time. These data are very useful for developing actionable and clinical insights. These insights are utilized for predictive care, early detection, and monitoring chronic conditions. Um, as of few examples, arrhythmias and AFib detection has been a good examples, which was recognized by FDA in several over-the-counter medical devices. And a uh, global pandemic also contributed to this shift of uh, wellness and medical merger. One popular application that uh, we have seen is to the ident identification of physiological changes over a baseline which can be precursors to the pulmonary diseases. As of the pulmonary diseases, um, COVID-19 is one of them. Um, for a typical COVID-19, you would expect uh, macro level changes for resting heart rate, SpO2 and respiration rate. Heart rate tends to go up, resting heart rate tends to go up, SpO2 or blood oxygen is going down, leaving the health band of 95 to 100. It goes down uh, close to 90s and tends to leave below um, 90s. And then respiration rate um, is going up. So it said this is a very good example of a medical value of a remote PPG monitoring. Now let's move to the requirements and challenges for designing a successful PPG design. The, uh, the very initial component at the bottom of the signal change is PPG sensing. Maxim offers best-in-class analog front ends with um, high SNR and low power characteristics. For SNR, every incremental SNR value enables new use cases. Uh, then it comes the algorithms which interpret the raw signal coming from the hardware and make it meaningful. PPG algorithms are quite complicated, which require high density engineering resources. And Maxim has been building in-house algorithms. Internal algo development team and sensor development team work hand in hand together. And this uh, cooperation starts from the very beginning uh, of a product definition and it goes to building reference wearables. Therefore, our algorithms are very fine tuned with our sensors and the algorithms exploits every bits and pieces of the, the sensors. Eventually, we offer our customers the synergy, the synergy that is coming uh, out of this internal cooperation of two different disciplines and two different teams. Our algorithms uh, manage and regulate the sensors. Therefore, you don't need to worry how to cover a wide spectrum of physiologies like different skin tones, different perfusion indexes, and varying environmental conditions like temperature or ambient, ambient changes. And for the algorithms, we believe in a good combination of um, signal processing and neural networks. We utilize both of them. Um, and we put our algorithms in a sensor up, in a very small, small low power uh, sensor up to decouple our customers from the embedded complexity. Now, these two components, best-in-class sensors and high-performance algorithms, are not sufficient to design a high-performance optical system. 
you need to have a system level of design and optimization. It starts from the requirement of a particular body location. Wrist is the most common body location. However, other locations do require different topologies. With our optical models, we help customers for a particle topology based on their use cases. Then it requires the optimization and validation. We know it because uh, we try to mimic our customers' challenges by building reference designs or reference variables. These reference designs are stressed with use case implementations and they are under stress with optical validations and power, op uh, power optimizations. And eventually, we provide matured reference design to reduce our customer's design time. Now let's look uh, what this reference design can offer. MaxRef Des103 comes with built-in algorithms and it is ready to be used in a data collection trial. Before I touch upon the algorithms, uh, let me explain what you can do with data collection and clinical trials. Um, for instance, you may have your product ideas that require PPG in the system, but you are coming, you may be coming from a, a background um, or with a discipline that is other than PPG, and you may not be familiar with PPG, whereas your product idea requires a PPG in the system. This reference design immediately enables you to conduct your clinical trials and building your own expertise on top of PPG. You will be free of managing the uh, low-level hard hardware-level algorithms, so that you, you cannot, so that you can implement your your upper-level ideas on top of it. In a way, it abstracts uh, you from the PPG challenges. Uh, on the other hand, it is very transparent so that you, whenever you need, you can go deep down into the raw data. Uh, now let me present the algorithm content coming with this reference design. At the bottom, we have the sensor and very coupled tuned uh, hardware level algorithms. Uh, the, the, we do sensor management and regulate the sensor to tweak for power optimization. And in this hardware level, we do the activity recognition and we do compensate heart rate. And uh, in this level, hardware level, we provide a heart rate or to be precise, pulse rate, IBI, which is uh, interbeat interval, which is the essence of HRV analysis, and we provide SPO2. We put uh, and we provide the hardware level uh, in, a, in a very small, tiny, low power sensor hub in the system. On top of this hardware level, we build our analytical algorithms. Uh, these are sleep quality monitoring, respiration rate, stress monitoring, and sports coaching. This level, analytical level, we, uh, we deliver them in a phone environment, in a phone um, application, or in a, in a form factor of a phone uh, library. Let me walk you through how we validate some of these algorithms. Um, for heart rate measurement, we apply several protocols, one of which is high-intensity interval running, where we require sprints and sudden stops. We monitor our convergence performance. As you can see in a graph, there is a, a pie, spikes and ups and downs. As a result, we prove that we stay in plus minus 5 ppm error band for the 90% of the protocol. And this is an industry-leading performance. For SpO2 or blood oxygen, we go for external clinical trials uh, where oxygen saturation is induced in a controlled environment, in a clinical environment. It is induced from 100% down to 70%, and this is repeated uh, once more in a resting state. We hit 2.86 RMS error where uh, FTA requirement is below uh, 3.5. And of course, these validations are conducted with a wide variety of physiologies. That is different perfusion index subjects, wide variety of skin colors and, and BMI. And um, in, in this wide variety of uh, physiologies, darker skin tones are not the challenging one, but it's the 
subjects, the skinny subjects, and we make sure that we cover them the corner cases so that our customers uh, can apply their medical um, requirement use cases um, in their in their uh, in their products. Let me walk you through the use cases of um, SpO2 shortly, or in other words, blood oxygen. Um, it's one of the five vital signs that uh, clinical community uh, recognize. A non-invasive method, non-invasive optical pulse oximetry uh, has been available since 70s uh, and in the form factor um, of a finger clip. Um, it serves as a on-demand spot check. On the other hand, pulse oximetry has a lot more offer when it is monitored continuously and remotely uh, on a wearable. With continuous monitoring, it's a precursor for uh, pulmonary diseases, infections, and sleep disorders. Um, this chart uh, gives us an example where we see sudden drops and uh, ops due to the apnea events. With this reference wearable, uh, we show that uh, it, we can catch uh, those sudden inclines and rises. As of sleep monitoring, um, it can offer a surprising wealth of data that can help you to pinpoint sleep problems. Therefore, you can take insightful actions to enjoy a more restful night. Um, imagine that you have a, a data, a month of data or a, a, a sleep data for a year. With that, you can decide what type of life decisions or habits uh, worked for you or worked against you. With our sleep offering, we provide the durations of overall sleep and wake durations and uh, the, the durations of the sleep stages. Uh, speaking about the, the sleep stages, uh, not all of them contributes to a good rest, but a harmony of them are required. Therefore, based on that, we do provide a sleep quality index, uh, which you can depend on your decision. Yesterday night, it was, let's say, 4.0, um, and, and the, the, the day before it was 3.5. Maybe it was because of the, the long dinner that I had, and et cetera. Another use case is a smart alarm, uh, which wake you up during a sleep stage, which, uh, which is for starting a day. Now let me walk you through the sensor app. Sensor app uh, manages the optical and motion sensors. Um, it does all the, uh, say dirty work, does all the synchronization and it regulates the sensors. And in a way, the, in a way complexity of the, this uh, the system is isolated by sensor app. You can offload, it's offloaded to the sensor app. Therefore, it reduces the schedule and validation risks. Meanwhile, it is um, very easy to integrate into the host platform because we provide sample source codes. Uh, for the algorithms, we invest, new, we invest in new use cases and constantly improve our software. And we reflect and we share, we push these improvements to our customers with, with, with updates. Sensor app is designed in a way that um, it, it, it accepts OTA or over the air updates so that our customers are now uh, having those updates uh, for their wearables already in the market. Last but not least, uh, Sensor app is free of licensing or any royalty burden. It's just sourcing a small chip. Now it comes to the fun part. Uh, you can immediately start monitoring yourself with this, with this reference wearable. Um, for that we provide, we offer two different graphical user interfaces. One is Windows based, the other one is an Android based. The Windows base is for more trained eyes. It enables you uh, for more tweaks. You can get into the all registers, APIs. You can play around with the algorithm configurations and AFE configurations. In a wider screen, you will can see more uh, signal on a real-time analysis. 
On the other hand, the Android one is more convenient to carry. Um, you can evaluate your use case uh, while carrying that phone. And both of them enables you to collect and store raw data. Now, after you evaluate, if you are eager to have your own prototype immediately, then uh, I have good news for you. We do provide a wide variety of design resources to reduce your time. As of hardware files, hardware files, we provide schematics, layouts, BOM list, mechanical files, and this reduces prototyping schedules. For the algorithm libraries, we provided uh, for the sensor app, and, uh, and the rest is the analytical ones in the form. Uh, for the sample host MCU code, we provide a source of the host, and this reduces the firmware integration into a few days. For design and validation guidelines, uh, optical systems can be complex. Uh, on the contrary, we see from uh, we see that it can be underestimated, and this leads to extended uh, schedule times. We provide user guides, application notes, system validation guides, SPO2 calibration guides, so that it's a kind of a checklist for our customers to uh, to, to guide them which uh, steps that they need to go in design and also in validation. As an overall, this reference design is a complete PPG system that comes with a clinical grade SPO2 accuracy. Accordingly, that has been quite a bit of demand for it in the market and uh, we made sure we have enough inventory available. Please reach out to your Maxim sales rep or to me if you need one. Uh, that's it from my side. Before going to Q&A section, I deliver the mic to Katie. All right, thank you, Nishet, for that informative presentation. Before we start Q&A, I want to draw your attention to the Contact Us window on your screen. If you'd like additional info beyond what was covered today, please fill out this form and we will reach out to you. And moving swiftly on to Q&A, we have a lot of good questions that have come in. The first question is, you have shown your validation for interval running on slide number seven. Can this validation data be used for CE filing? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, um, our, mm -hmm. our next question. Um, on this same slide, uh, does your algorithm work during other activities like using an elliptical machine? Yes, sure. Uh, the heart rate estimation is working in other um, activities, sport activities, like, like you mentioned, elliptical machine, um, rowing, um, internal or external um, biking, and etc. We will date these activities in uh, in our protocols, and we uh, provide the, the the validation results in our web. All right, another question from the audience: What power consumption can you expect to estimate battery size? Um, the the overall um, the um, uh, sensor up AFE and the LEDs three LEDs um, for continuous SpO2 and continuous heart rate measurement is around seven milliamps, and for this one uh, with the battery inside, including the BLE with the BLE radio, it consume it is available for a one night of a um, sleep, so we can. Um, collect data for a sleep around eight hours. Okay. Uh, you presented validations on different skin tones. How do you make sure that algorithms work on dark skin tones? Um, there are um, there are three there are mainly three um, LED uh, instruments that 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 uh, that that we use for. It's the the LED. Um, drive current, the sampling frequency, and the duration that the LED is on. Uh, basically, by uh, um, by configuring these, we adopt the different physiologies. Of course, there's a trade-off of burning um, power because LED is the most uh, power-consuming component in the system. That's one thing you need to be aware of the power, and the second thing is you. You need to be. Um, uh, you don't need to. You should avoid saturating the the um, photodiodes. 
the 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 key here is to identify which the the physiology is in uh, what is his physiology or sorry the the perfusion index and if it is sweating or the, the uh, his skin is dry or not uh, the the important thing is to identify how much of these three instruments to play that's the secret source of it we dynamically adjust these to make sure that uh, the medical use case is covered with a wide distribution of the spectrum of the physiologists, but also save power where it is available. Okay, next question is, what activity classes do we provide for the Max Ref Des 103? We do provide five activities, resting, running, um, walking, um, and, and biking. Uh, I might miss the, the fifth one. But it's available on the on the documentation. That's great. Um, our next question is: Does the sensor hub support various optical configurations? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, different bottle locations uh, may require different topologies, or um, your use case uh, may require different topologies. Um, several LEDs or down to one single LED. SPO2 requires different LEDs um, and it supports different uh, PD channels from one to two, two different independent channels. Based on your uh, requirement, based on your topology, um, uh, sensor app is quite versatile and it can be, it is, it can be um, configured. Thank you for that answer. And um, our next question is, how does, respira how does the respiration rate algorithm work? Um, respiration rate algorithm works based on heart rate and IBI. Um, and it analyzes uh, in, in time domain as well as in frequency domain. Um, it's a wellness application because PPG can be used for wellness um, application. Uh, we, for our validations, we require and we use um, Capnograph for our internal validations. Um, basically, it is using IBI and heart rate as an answer to your question. Do you have solutions for other body locations? Yeah, um, yeah, we do. We can provide um, other topologies like um, forehead chest, um, upper arm, abdomen, uh, yeah, ear. Yeah, we can do provide um, other um, topologies for other bottle locations. What we do is we analyze based on our um, skin model, uh, and then we can analyze what are the requirements for applying those specific use cases, and uh, we can uh, certainly provide a um, topology or configuration for the optical configuration. Okay. You mentioned SPO2 calibration in your presentation. How is calibration done in mass production? Um, SPO2 calibration is needed for the design itself. Uh, you don't need it for uh, every manufactured device in the factory floor. Uh, you need to make sure that you, uh, you calibrate and validate it for the design itself. Having said that, you need to make sure that uh, you need to avoid part-to-part -part variations in the factory floor. And for that one, you need to make sure that you, you validate the PPG uh, the signal. Um, and we can also recommend, we do provide some documentation um, uh, how to avoid the yields for part-to-part -part variations because we also do um, such um, testing and screening for our own device. Okay, our next question. What is the advantage of the Max Ref Des 103 versus Max Ref Des 104? Why would I choose one over the other? Yeah, um, 104 is the coming with ECG, whereas this one lacks ECG. This one is only PPG. Uh, 104 is coming with ECG and temperature sensing on top. Uh, and ECG is synchronized um, with PPG. That's a big advantage. Um, therefore, if you would like to go, if you require for ECG, you should definitely go to 104. Uh, if you are looking for uh, one uh, PPG only, 
um, you can use both of them. It's more or less the same. That's great. Okay, our next question. Where can we access the software files and documentations? Um, you can Google uh, MaxFest as 103 dash and it will direct you to our web page. There you will see um, Design Resources tab. Uh, under that tab, you will see a software package. Although it sounds like it's a software package, but there are documentations and guidelines inside that uh, documentation package. Okay, and our next question, which data is available out of this Max Ref Des 103? Um, um, Max Ref Des 103, first, you can store the data um, out of your clinical trial on the watch, on the flash of the watch. You can store it uh, on the Windows GUI or on the Android GUI. Uh, and it is quite transparent. You can get the raw data. Uh, raw PPG data, raw uh, Excel data. On top of that, all the um, um, AFE registers and ALGO, all the ALGO API is stored in that data. So it is transparent in that sense. All right. Th th that was all the questions that we had for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and thank you for your great questions. Again, thank you to our presenter, Nishat Tamer. Uh, if your question was not answered during the webinar, we will answer it via, oh, we just got another question in there. So I guess I will ask it. Um, does MaxRef Des 104, uh, is it supported by a smartwatch GUI over BLE? Yes, it will be. Um, it will be just like this one. We will keep the same um, smartwatch um, GUI for MRD 104 as well. It will be the same wellness app. All right. Thank you, Nishat, for answering that last question there. Um, if your no question was not answered during the webinar, we will answer it via email. After the webcast ends, there will be a pop-up on your screen for an opportunity to request a meeting with our team. Thank you for joining us.